going on? What's going on? Brutus here, bringing you the latest One Hive War Recap video. Uh, for this one, we went up against Emphatic Elite. Nice clan, uh, well respected, and well hard fought war. It was a lot of fun. And as always, it comes down to the end, right? So, um, respect out to Emphatic Elite. Um, if you want to see how it went down, let's take a look at the uh, last few war events. Or actually, let's look at the war stats, rather. So, 36 three stars uh, to 34. And my kid is chasing the cat. It's business as usual in my house. Going to the total destruction, we have 95.5%. 90 to 95.1%. Run, cat, run. <laughs> Going down, um, so there you take a look at it. it was, that shows you how close it was. With 0.4% total destruction on both sides, um, three stars is, three. unlike what Molt thinks, uh, a three stars win wars, right? So looking on the left side, emphatically doubled uh, the top four, uh, the Town Hall 11s. There were four Town Hall 11s, and one really high percent at 73% with the Town Hall 11 on Town Hall 11. They declared all the Town Hall 10s except these two, and that was the Difference Maker. Uh, these actually came, this this pair actually came down to the, the la one of the last attacks uh, of the war. Cleared all the 9s, and then one Hive side uh, doubled all the Town Hall 11s early with Town Hall 10s. You can see the percentage on there. They actually beat us on the, uh, um, slightly I believe, on the percentages up top, uh, but we cleared everything else. All the Town Hall 10s and 9s alike. I believe there was a total of 11 Town Hall 10s and 4 Town Hall 11, uh, 11s and the rest were 9s. So let's get right into it. Uh, I really, I'll start with one that I wanted to talk through. Oh, there's, I'm sorry, there's one other thing I wanted to point out. Um, one Hive, uh, actually uh, we stumbled coming out. I did, man, I did not do anything this war. It was really frustrating. But we stumbled coming out slightly, and what I mean by that is there was a total of, what did I have written down here? Seven. Seven, possibly more, uh, with just five hours left in the war. Seven, 99%. Seven. So uh, there wasn't as many scouts for either side. At one point, I believe EE had, um, uh, basically had, I think, one scout remaining of the nines, and one high wasn't very much more after that. I think we had three or four. But with that said, I wanted to talk about Holtar's attack raid right here. Um, I'll pause it real quick because I I wanted to say that I originally, re we were on Twiddler session, uh, talking through the bases, um, that mine was on there, uh, talking through my attempt. And then this one as well, where uh, props out to Dwarf um, and, and, and uh, Holtard here. Uh, where they, they, we were out there giving feedback about people's strategies and, th and things like that it was really helpful to other sessions and team speak combination. Uh, there was a really good discussion here, but my recording of uh, Mike's situation just did not did not work the way I wanted to. It cut in and out, and it was wasn't something I could utilize. But um, respect out to uh, Dwarf giving the feedback on this. As you're going to see, this is a fresh hit. Um, Hot uh, is going to come on in. Uh, get a giant lure, giant lure to get the CC out, and then he's gonna just put a uh, very cheap out there five troop space. He's gonna we're gonna uh, we're <laughs> shot. Uh, Hotar is gonna use the uh, shallow royals and air defense to his advantage. Um, kind of an off off putting base. But, uh, no no healers, just just the queen and double poisons. Almost loses everything, but then uses the ability to just take care of the CC. But you see that uh, he's going to get one of the three air defenses for the swap um, because she's going to sit just outside of the expo range. Meanwhile, Suicide BK takes care of the queen. So now he's got the royal and the air defense and the CC all out for the cost of royals. Uh, two poison spells. Uh, and then he sends his max dragon, really shallow, um, sh dragon, max hound, really sh shallow, sending in the loons right behind with some haste. That Tesla farm by the by the CC was unexpected. We did not expect it to be there. We thought it was going to be lower, but everything else was according to plan. He adjusted well on the fly by putting, uh, dealing with the rage on the top up there that I don't believe was part of the original uh, makeup, but to quickly take down all the 
air defenses, spot on, well adjusted on the fly with the Teslafon popping up, and then like nine baby dragons for the bottom side because these sweepers won't even get close to covering the trash building coming in. And by the time that they get up in there anyway, the sweepers are gone. So just really smart dissection of this base. There were huts in the corner, uh, troll huts too, if you guys look at this. The, how there's a space in between the corner to try to make you think that there's a troll tesla there that was also discussed in the twiddle session i myself use that technique on my base building <clears throat> to try to make people think that there's troll teslas my kid loves the morning <laughs> sorry about that so, baby dragons and under rage one of the most underrated troops now in the game currently right now i believe just a really smart plan you go to times two because uh, the baby dragons will, uh, um, there's three of them and one of them is fu uh, fully healthy. So there's no uh, no doubt that he'll get this as he cleans up on the top. He's got he's got Annie the archer up top there just working on that uh, gold storage. But really smart plan to dissect the base piece by piece. I really wish that the um, audio content didn't chop up on us and I would have put it out a, a different view of a toilet session. So maybe on the next one we can get that going. Nice job um, for the Fresh Hit Haltard. Let's move up to number 25. The man that was on to the session, helping out everyone, Dwarf. Um, he has got, I'll pause it, look at that. That's right. So first looking at this base, look at the way that the hogs would path. Going down here like this, down here like that, down here like this. So there's no DGB locations. And he takes full advantage of that. Uh, he does a hog swarm. 34 uh, hogs. I believe he has five more in the CC. Uh, easy lure just with, um, with, uh, with that. Poison down royals with no tank in front of them. Just to poison to slow down the, the attack rate and the damage per second that all those troops, troops do. Uh, then puts down the BK royal ability. Uh, Royal, I'm sorry, Iron Fist ability. Down goes the BK and they start moving on towards the enemy queen. She has enough gusto to get there with just one healer investment, which I thought was smart to ensure because it was that important to get the queen out and just look at them go. More hogs than heyday. <laughs> um, smart with uh, just the, you know trying to get some hogs on the way in with the clever uh, um, trap placement. But you'll see how many hogs up he has at the end. There's really just... The hogs even have to circle back. The hogs have to circle back. I mean, you, you talk about it. Um, I say it all the time, like about using the perfect um, attack strategy, the right base, uh, right attack strategy for the right base. And this was one of those. There's no DGB locations. And the, the queen and uh, CC were really easy and shallow to get for a minimum cost. I mean, we're talking a giant and a healer. That's about it. The rest of us is Royals. It's hard not to do this attack strategy, even though it's, it came, came from Town Hall 8. Um, it still has its places, you know? It's all about cracking that base. So really nice job, Dwarf, recognizing the weaknesses of a base and then focusing on the right strategy to get that three on a fresh hit. Nice job, man. As we go to times four, nothing but cleanup. I just love hog swarms on Town Hall 9 because you don't see them every day. Got a huts in the corner, but there was so much time, so much hogs up left at the end. It didn't even matter. Uh, we'll get out of here and we'll go uh, continue to. That was, oh, one more. Yep. And then we'll get some Town Hall uh, 10 action. Uh, Lord of the Scath. You got Bokel. Is this one fresh? Yeah, it's got it. It's fresh. Zapquake, um, uh, Gobo, Drags. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. I can't make this stuff up. So I see. But you've been seeing how the air defense is here on the left side with the sweeper covering it like that. It's he it's it's attempted to heavily be um, protected with the bows as well. But he a cheap funnel going on with just the minions that are uncovered by the trash. You can see how they come out like that. And he's going to send his kill squad from the left to get all of that. And he's going to zap quake the furthest away air defense. So basically, he's, when he's done with his kill squad push, for two golems, uh, go, uh, uh, bullish in the CC, and a few minions for the funnel only, really, and then wall breakers to let him in, he'll get this entire section on the left side. And then he, and then the sweeper placements, um, he'll also get the sweeper. You can see that the sweeper is a non-factor for the dragons coming in. And then again, going to zap quake 
the furthest away air defense. Just really smart um, recognition of the weakness of the base of the clump together, three air defenses like that on the left. I mean, you had to do air something. You know, um, that, is some, that is something else that I'd like to uh, talk through real quick because it was mentioned a few times in the chat and I kind of felt a little bit of it as well and I didn't think about it until it was said is that um, I'm a huge fan of, of, of Hagen, you know, a Tesla farm on the far left, but he's still got a Royal Cloak ability and some complimentary loons to support them all over there. There's just too much DPS in the air that's going to uh, circle the base, especially with uh, the dead zone right here like that. It's almost, almost like inviting them to keep wor working around. But the thing that we were talking about was um, the uh, uh, Hagen may not be the one to go to anymore. God, it just feels so foreign coming out of my mouth like that. That's what she said. <laughs> but uh, it, it's <laughs> it's that, it's the buff the cannons is why. You know, it's on the higher end of the spectrum, uh, the, the buff the cannons, I just, I feel the difference. You know, it's you, you can't be so um, loose, I guess, with your hog deployment because you may not have that many uh, at the end to clean up. I know on mine, I ran out of uh, ran out of time on one of them, which was really frustrating. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it, you know, with, with the buff to cannons and just the way things are now, it's like go, go La Loon might be, it might be the new thing that everyone's leaning on, um, especially with the way people are trying to make anti-HGHB bases. Um, they're forgetting about go La Loon. So keep going up. Nice job, Boko. Really enjoyed that Zap Quake fresh hit. Gobo, uh, Gobo Dragon, Dragoon, right? Gobo Dragoon. Uh, let's go up to number 14. Fresh hit, Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 10 ASAP Ozzy. I think, uh, yep, I'm going to do a Queen Walk Boner attack. I mean, we almost, it's like the thing that uh, uh, will get you the three nowadays. It's like I see more of this than anything else. I myself am still learning this. I recently just got 296% in my Town Hall 10 um, doing this and I, basically I was running, a, I was chasing the clock. So I felt the effect of the of the miners, but I don't have 40-40 queen. Uh, Royals I have 20-22 or something like that, so that's also another factor. Um, putting in the queen walk here, but he starts with the super golem. He puts the healers behind the golem as they put tank for five point defense. Then the queen starts taking uh, off a little bit of these point defenses while the golem just sits there. Just excellent placement, uh, goes ahead and sends in surgically uh, the uh, wall, break, wall breakers to get that corner. And once it opens, then the, the golem moves over to the left with the healer still behind it. Uh, and the Royals as well. I mean, that, that combination right there is just so smart. A Queen, uh, sorry, a Pekka comes out. He's not even waiting. Did you see that? Not even waiting. Already sending the, the, the uh, Miners. As you see that, he's going to basically punch a hole right here and get the, the, get the other Infernal on the right, which is what the Queen needs to shoot over and get. But she's chasing butterflies at the moment. As the Larry sucker inward, he's losing some of his um, his uh, bowlers. In fact, he loses them all right here. That queen uses her ability. He's really needing that bottom inferno tower to take out. Down it goes. There's that gut. Keeping the, uh, as I said in a different video, keeping those mass miners within an 8 to 10 tile radius as they circle around the base where you get the biggest bang for your buck. Um, and it, uh, as far as DPS, um, as far as cleaning up afterwards, so for time considering, and then um, lastly to make sure that you maximize your heal, that you don't have your miners spread out too far, too thin. Uh, but at this point, he's got all of his uh, miners still up, fully healthy coming into this back end section, which has um, a wizard tower and then two point uh, that could pose a threat. But then um, coming in after they come in slightly wounded, uh, about 250 DPS on them left because the bombs don't do uh, 1.5 times damage, which I think they could have done to try to help nerf them. But coming into the last part here, at that, this point it's over. It was a really nice attack about how we maximized that goal, one golem um, to tank five point defenses to, for that entry as they circle back to the left. Troll Tesla. Still, and again, Troll Tesla still got a fresh three. Uh, that just tells you how great of an attack that was. Really nice attack ASAP. 
Uh, let's go for the last one here. Fabian, uh, on number 16, Town Hall 10 v. Town Hall 10. Uh, and then we'll call it a video. Almost looks, it looks too damn familiar, right? <laughs> a queen walk boner attack. Uh, but this one the, does not start with a golem uh, walk, rather. It uh, uh, starts with the queen. She's going to walk down this left side, you'll see. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's going to walk down the right side because he um, broke this, this piece right here. She'll step up. Uh, see, what am I saying? Going to walk to the left like I originally said. Tells me too early for me, I guess. Um, queen, I'm sorry, be, a baby dragon uh, forming part of the funnel uh, with the go under the tankage of the golem. Queen walks down, opens up the wall, and um, is going to. I don't know how he gets this this uh, inferno tower. I thought he was aiming for this wall, but I, you know, I don't think I saw this attack all the way through. Just that I wrote down the notes for it. it makes no sense. I can write down notes if you don't if you do. Write down the notes for it. Uh, oh, there it is. There's the jump. That's how he's going to get to it. So, okay. So, he's going to step over. Uh, look how these infer... This, look how these... Um, right, there, there it is. Already starting the miners. Going to stay, stay on this right-hand side here with about 8 to 12 tile radius because this will all be gone. And got an L shape for the miners to go through. So, we'll back out just a little bit. Um, like I said, setting those miners early so that they act as... Um, to basically run along parallel or complementary to your kill squad entry. Um, so, re yeah, yeah, really nice uh, queen walk on this. I still got to learn this. I, my timing sucks on this. I always tend to be chasing the clock whenever I try this. Really nice attack, though. Yeah, um, a really nice war from uh, Emphatic Elite. It, it was really exciting. Went down to the last uh, few uh, attacks here, as he sees. Um, the rest, uh, rest of his miners coming in with just 20 seconds left. Look how fast! Look how, look how, uh, how fast they'll get through that uh, entire section of what's remaining within 20 seconds uh, left on the clock. It's just, it's insane. So we go to times two. That was a really nice attack, um, Fabian. That'll be uh, the three star for the town hall tens. And then um, let's look at the la la the final word. How close this was. Uh, fa final results rather. So. Coming down with just like 10-15 minutes left, what uh, what Emphatic Elite had to do was clear the uh, obviously clear the last remaining Town Hall 10s, uh, but they got close, they uh, failed on one hive right here, and then a uh, shout out to um, our top three guys that were uh, uh, Utfan, Kid, to, uh, Kid, and VIP going perfect on uh, the dips, which are, which are needed. Uh, for, for wars like this, as you got your Town Hall tends to go uh, hitting upward to get the Town Hall 11s. Um, but you, you can see down here how close it was still needed. We needed this Town Hall 10 to be cleared with Erotic that got that and Kid to get that 12 to, to give us that, to put to keep the pressure onto Emphatic Elite uh, so that when they went to attempt on uh, Fabian first um, and failed and then uh, also with Peril and failed, they needed to clear those two. So... Um, really nice coordination, keeping in line what um, that we were ahead with percentage, and we could we could do what we needed to to get that win. Thank you, Emphatic Elite, for the arranged war. It was really fun, um, and yeah, that'll be it for the recap. Once again, it's Brutus reminding you you got to be better than a double. And I will check you next time.